I greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. My name is Matthew Johnson, and I am the pastor here at Glencoe United Methodist Church, and welcome to worship. I am both thankful and blessed that you have decided to join us for worship today. And though we've already worshiped this morning in person, we, we thought it was important that we share with you this opportunity online to worship with us. So no matter where you are, no matter what time it is, no matter what you're wearing, no matter what you're doing, now is an opportunity that you can join us in worshiping the Lord our God. Now, if you would like to learn more about us here at Glencoe, our church, you can visit our website at www.glencoeumc.org or the description below. And if you would like to keep up with all the ministry opportunities that we got going on here at the church, feel free to like, comment, follow, subscribe on our social media platforms. You can see them on the screen now. And if you would like to be on our email list to kind of keep up with what's happening, prayer requests and all that good stuff, as well as the worship service will be emailed out every Sunday, then go to the description below and sign up at the link. Now, friends, with all of this in mind, let us now enter into a time of worship together. Blessed is the Lord. Blessed are God's people to whom God sends a Savior, the Messiah, who is Christ the Lord. Blessed is our God and blessed are God's gifts that grace us with forgiveness and every good gift. Lord, you have come to dwell within us. Build your temple within our hearts this day and every day. Amen. Our opening scripture today comes from Malachi, chapter 3, the first four verses. Hear now the word of God, friends. See, I am sending a messenger to prepare the way before me, and the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant in whom you delight, indeed, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming and who can stand when he appears? For he is the refiner's fire and the fuller's soap. He will sit at a refiner and a purifier of silver. And he will purify the descendants of Levi and refine them like gold and silver. Until they present offerings to the Lord in righteousness. Then the offering of Judah and Jerusalem will be pleasing to the Lord as in the days of old. And as in the former years, this is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Today we light two candles. The first candle is called hope, and it is a reminder that God's promises are true. The second candle is called peace, God's gentle, loving peace for our lives. We seek God's peace in this time of stress. Come, all is ready. Let the light of these candles, called hope and peace, Bring happiness to your spirits.
Lord, if we see one more list of things to do, we think we might scream. We have made list after list in preparation for this holiday season. We have shopped until we dropped. We have baked. We have decorated. We have sent cards. We have planned festivities. We have gone to plays and concerts at schools. We have seen uh, other school performances. And we've gotten ready for many church presentations and preparations, as you can see around us, oh God. We are in this whirlwind of preparation, but what we have forgotten is to place your presence in our lives. You bring us hope and you bring us peace. You remind us that it is we who have created and succumbed to this hectic schedule that we have put ourselves in. Slow us down, O oh Lord, during this season. Bring us again to those moments in which we are not running at, through lists of obligations through our heads or on paper. But instead, help us to feel your presence and a peace of mind. As we have brought these names and needs of people near and dear to us into your presence, for your healing and your comfort. Remind us that we also stand in need of your healing love ourselves. Help us to focus on you and the gift of your son, Jesus. Help us to take this big breath and exhale slowly, letting loose this anxiety, this stress of the season letting these worries and fears melt away. Fill our lives with peace as we continue on this Advent journey. Help us to see you in all that we do and help us to always turn away from the world and turn towards you. For you are our God, the Lord, creator of heaven and earth. And we ask all these things in your Son, Jesus' name. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, before you today is our gifts of offerings and tithes. They have been gifts to us, and thus we give back to you during this time. May our hope, may our peace, may our joy and love show through our faith in all that we do. And may these gifts of monies and of ourselves during this time be acceptable in your sight so that the world may be transformed into a better place, a place that is worthy of calling it home. Lord, we ask all these things through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our gospel lesson this day comes from the Gospel of St. Luke, chapter 3, the, verse, the first six verses. Hear now the word of God, friends. In the 15th year of the reign of Emperor Tiberius, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod was ruler of Galilee, and his brother Philip ruler of the region of Iturea and Trachonitis and Lysanias, ruler of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Anas and Cephas, the the word of God came to John, son of Zechariah, in the wilderness. He went into the region around the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. As it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah, the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill shall be made low and the crooked shall be made straight and the rough ways made smooth and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. We live in a time that is busy, 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 busy. I want you to answer me this to yourself, of course. We, we, don't, we don't want to hear everybody's answers all at once because it'll get loud in here. But how busy have you been lately getting gifts, preparing for Christmas in some fashion? Whether it's buying food for a party that you're about to have, like an ugly sweater party. Whether it is 
preparing, catering for some sort of meal that's coming up for another church party that we may or may not be having soon. Maybe you've been preparing your home by decorating like Lindsay and I have. Maybe you did that a long time ago. I know some folks on this road who have had some lights up for a little while now. So y'all been on the ball. I go up and down the roads and I see people with lights up. Some people had lights up the day after Halloween, but that's a whole different story about a whole different set of people. Not that I don't listen to Christmas music, but I don't put my lights up that early. But here's the thing. We are always <laughs> keeping busy. We're going shopping for Christmas presents because that's this time of year. If you um, potentially indulge on Black Friday or Cyber Monday, you probably spent time either out and about buying gifts or at least online buying gifts for folks that you know, family, friends, because you wanted to get that better deal because you didn't want to spend an arm and a leg on Christmas. Though, let's be realistic, the cheaper it is, more likely you're just going to spend more in the long term and just get more stuff because that's just usually how it works in most places. But here's the thing. You've spent all of this time doing these things, setting up these lists, setting up these, these to-dos because of the season. I think about this sanctuary. I think about how long it took for this sanctuary to get decorated. As beautiful as it is, I think about all of the hard work that had to come into it. I think about all the hard work that goes into our homes during this season to make it feel like Christmas in our homes. I want you to just stop and think for a second. How long do you spend on decorating your tree alone? How long does it take you to decorate your tree alone? For some of you, you buy your tree. You buy a tree every year. You buy a real tree. That means you have to string your lights every year. It means you have to get your ornaments out, then put them up. Or you can be more like me and Lindsay, have a pre-bought tree, and then you just plug them together. Unless they give you difficulties like this one did with us this year. And then you got to go hunting to figure out why it's not lighting up everywhere. But I digress. We make lives hectic. We make lives chaotic. We make lives crazy, especially this time of the year. Why is that? Well, we feel like the more we do, the better it's going to be. The more we buy, the better the gifts are going to be. Or the more we spend, the better the gifts are. You've heard the old saying, you get what you pay for. So I guess that means that that really expensive gift must be worth it, right? Not necessarily. One of the things that this season teaches me every year is what we value most in our lives. What do you spend the most time doing this time of year? What do you spend the most time doing? Do you spend more time decorating your home? Do you spend more time shopping? Do you spend more time online trying to shop that way instead? Do you spend more time going in places to see lights or doing some other activity like going to see some sort of nativity scene or skit? Do you spend time in your Bibles reading what the Christmas story is? Reflecting upon why we celebrate this season every year. What's really interesting to me is that the Christmas story is this beautiful story, but it's also fraught with fear and anxiety at points. Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. When we were reading the Christmas story the other day of Jesus' birth at the birthday party for Jesus, the, the story that we read actually talked about after when Jesus was born, Herod being afraid of Jesus and how he was going to try to harm Jesus. Most stories when I was growing up, we didn't read about that. We read, Jesus was born, here comes the wise men. And that's what I remember. If I was taught something different, I sure don't remember it. They weren't harping on it. Because I remember a lot of what they harped on. 
Because they, they say it over and over. You tend to remember things like that, do you not? Well, one thing that they didn't harp on very much was the fact that Herod was trying to kill Jesus because he was afraid of Jesus. Jesus was a threat to him. He said, because when the wise men went to him, went to him and said, where is this, this newborn king? He's like, what king? I'm the king. And so he sent the wise men and said, tell me where he is so I can go and worship him. And of course, we know that he was going to mean him harm. We know that he was going to mean them harm. We knew that he was going to harm Jesus if he found out where he was. Is it just me or do I get vibes from the Old Testament? What's, what's the story? Oh, yes, Moses. Remember, back when Moses was born, what was happening? The Pharaoh was casting babies into the Nile. There was an imminent threat on Moses' life. And what did God do? God delivered Moses by having him put into a basket and led on down the Nile safely. He kept him safe. And then look at who he became. Jesus was kept safe when the angel of the Lord came to the wise men in a dream and said, do not go back to Herod and tell him where Jesus is. He means him harm. <clears throat> One of the things that we think, need to think about this season and every season of Christmas is of this real anxiety, this real fear that can come about. Because the world is depraved. The world is filled with evil. The world is filled with hatred. The world is filled with a lot of sin. The world is sick. And God has the cure. Jesus is the cure. We talked last week about hope. But I don't know about you, but hope only goes so far when I'm anxious. When I'm worried about something, I kid you not, I get super focused and I get just stressed out. I become a wreck. Who here becomes a wreck when they get stressed out? I know some of you do. I know I'm not the only one. Trust me. You can ask Lindsay. Many times when I get stressed out, I get ill. <clears throat> I get like laser focused on what has to be done. The one thing that doesn't help me is hope. Oh, just hope it'll be all right. It doesn't help me. What helps me is something that brings me peace in those stressful, anxious, worrisome times. God is the one who gives, our, gives us help. Where do we seek our help from? We look our eyes into the hills, and it comes from God. When we think about the Christmas story, we have peace of mind because God delivered Jesus safely. Even in imminent haunt, when there's an imminent threat on his life. When there was an imminent threat on, on um, Moses' life, God delivered him. We see God delivering. We see God blessing. We see God bringing us peace each and every day. The question is, are you looking for? Are you able to see it or are you blinded? Are you, do you have blinders on that's preventing you from seeing it? Or are you opening your eyes to it? If you read the Christmas story, God came to Joseph, came to Moses, I mean Mary, came to the wise men. God came to the shepherds. God came to them and spoke to them. God came to them and gave them hope, peace, joy, love in their own situations, as God does for us today. Remember, after Jesus had died, the disciples were hold they were holed up behind a closed door, feared for their lives. They were worried that they were going to get killed by the Romans, just like Jesus had. 
their, Messiah, their Messiah, their rabbi, had just died. And they were afraid. And Jesus came to them. And what did he tell them? He said, peace be with you. Peace. God brings us peace no matter what. God gives us peace through all the hard times. And during this season, we must remember to seek out that peace. To seek out that presence of God in every aspect of life. We got to slow down. We got to calm down. Yeah, things are going to get done. As Lindsay tells me time and time again, which I honestly think sometimes God is just talking through Lindsay because I need to hear those words. It will get done. It will be okay. Church will not fall apart if you mess up. As a perfectionist, when I mess up, it bothers me. As you have no, doubt, no doubtedly already seen, I have messed up multiple times in this sermon. And yes, I wrote that down, friends, because I knew I was going to mess up. Because I'm, I'm good like that. I see that coming. I know. But here's the reality. We're going to mess up. None of us are perfect. Doesn't matter if you're a perfectionist or not, you're going to mess up. Not everything's going to have to get done at once. If something doesn't get done, oh well, it'll be okay. If something gets lost by the wayside, I promise it'll be fine. If you don't buy that one gift because they sell out because you didn't get to it on time, it'll be okay. I promise that person will live. This season helps us to see our priorities. This season helps us shape our own lives around God or around the world. Have you noticed that? Have you ever noticed that? Do you spend more time shaping it around God or around the world? Worrying about the presence and the gifts, all of these gatherings... Or do you focus more on God during this season? We say every year, and I hear this from so many people, why do we celebrate Christmas? It's about baby Jesus. It's about the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Well, yeah, well, let's act like it. Let's act like it. Let's make Jesus a priority in our lives instead of making presents, making this season, this actual holiday, the priority. We can do that. You know how? You put God first. It's not easy because the world is the way it is. We make these lists that make things difficult. We make these lists of things to do and make ourselves busy, busy, busy. We go to work. We come home. We want to rest. Or we go out and we buy gifts and we come home. We want to rest. Or we go out and we buy gifts, come home. We got to decorate the house. Got to cook the Got to cook all the food that's got to go to this gathering. Got to go to the desserts. We've got to buy them. We've got to cook them. Got to wrap all the presents. Got to get all the decorations up. Got to get all these things done. Or we can take a moment, take a breath, exhale, and feel God's presence in our lives. We can remember what the season is truly about. We can focus our lives around Jesus and not around the holiday itself. Just like many, I get caught up in the holiday. I love this holiday season. I love Christmas. It's filled with a lot of great things, but it's also filled with a lot of chaos. And if we would just put Jesus first and focus on Jesus, instead of worrying about the details of our gatherings, of our gifts, of what our house looks like, of what we say and do. Maybe if we just put God first, put Jesus first, maybe then we can have a peace of mind, a peace that surpasses all of our understanding, a peace that only comes from God, that makes hope possible, that makes hope visible, that brings hope into light and opens the door.
for us to have joy and express love. Amen. peace in your hearts and live. Go in hope. Go in peace. Serve the Lord always. Give thanks and glory to God. Amen.